morning. So um, today we're going to do the overview and demonstration for my Art Snacks Inktober box. Now this is a specialty box. It was not included in my year-long subscription to Art Snacks, which was a gift from my mother, Denise Hilburn. Thank you very much. Um, this was actually something that I purchased um, in addition to that, and I purchased it way back after MTAC, which was in April, as sort of like a thank you for my backers on Patreon. I knew this would be something they'd be interested in, so that's, you know, that's the reason why I purchased it. And um, I also was really excited by all the hype around the box. Art Snacks sent out emails promoting the box, promising, you know, exclusives and, you know, deal uh, brand partnerships, and just, I really, I really got excited about it. Now I am a comic artist as you guys know. If you check out my channel all the way back there to last Inktober and you can just search Inktober in my search bar um, you'll see that last Inktober I did do a lot of brush inking so I am totally familiar with the Inktober concept. This will be my third year and I enjoy putting my Inktober goodies together in themed um, mini comic books or mini sketchbooks and you can check that out over here on my um, Gumroad account or you can buy physical copy through my Nata Soup shop. So um, I paid $99 way back in April-ish ish, to get the, the Art Snacks Inktober exclusive. Now it did come in um, yesterday, which would be the 12th. And um, there are videos up already for the unboxing. So this is the overview where we talk about prices, we talk about value, um, I show you how to prepare some of these and I do some demonstrations for you guys because they send so many inking goodies and because so many of you express interest in learning how to ink, I'm going to try to make the time to show you guys how to do that. I want to get you guys pumped for Inktober this year. So we're going to go ahead and go over the prices. Um, and I, the way I do it is I, for the blog post, I pull up several sites, but we're going to discuss their listed MSRP, and I have the card right here, as well as the lowest price I find online. And I do check a variety of sites, and if you're interested in seeing all the places that I scope out to find these prices, again, head on over to the blog. So let's get started with this Denik notebook. It has smooth paper inside. It's about cardstock weight. This is an Art Snacks exclusive. Um, in, the, uh, in the unboxing video, I did mention that I actually do not like fancy sketchbooks. I find them intimidating. And the way I get over my, my blank page phobia is by buying cheap sketchbooks. The cheapest sketchbook that will serve my purpose. So, they quoted this as being an $18 retail value, but there is nothing comparable on the site. So um, the two options are the Denix sketchbooks, which are larger in terms of page size, but thinner and are not spiral bound. And those are $14.95 unless they're on sale and then they're cheaper. And they're hard covers, which come with an elastic band and a bookmark and seem a little bit nicer than this are $18. So next is the Kurotake Seiji pen for manga and these are three nibs in here and these are $3.18 on Dick Blick and um, they said $3.99 retail. Next is the Kurotake nib holder. These are $3.99 on Blick and you can find them with the same listing as the Seiji pen nibs and again you can find links to everything on my blog and that is five dollars retail according to the card next is the Princeton Kalinsky Sable and it is 750R and the cheapest price I found for this is $14.98 on Artist and Craftsman Supply and since that is a new one to me it's Artist craftsman.com if you're interested. Um, if any of you guys have experience with them or would like to recommend them, go ahead and leave a comment. I'm always looking for new art resources. Um, and the card says it is $29.99 retail and I, I laughed and was kind of angry <laughs> and kind of went off on a mini rant in the unboxing. So, but we're going to talk about that today because I've also got some cheaper duplicates that we're going to talk about. Um, so, 
Next is the Copic Multiliner SP. It's got a metal barrel. It is refillable. And this is in point three, which is a very small size. If you're ham-handed like me, I do prefer a five or an eight. Um, and that was $7.99 on Jerry's Artorama. The card says $9.95 retail. Next is the Pentel pocket brush with two refills. This is a staple in my studio. You guys have seen me use the Pentel Curare, which is basically just um, a, the same brush, different body. Mine is in blush pink. Um, and I've reviewed these over on the blog. I've reviewed many of these items on the blog. Um, and will review some of these items on the blog. Um, this was $12.60 on Amazon or $12.60 at Walmart. And I have actually seen them at Walmart. And I did mention you could probably get them from Michaels as well. They're $17.99 at Michaels, but we did talk about that 50% off coupon. So that would be a good time to use that. Um, this is a staff favorite according to Art Snacks, and it is $19.99 retail according to them. Now, I kind of bulked at that price because, again, in the wild, I have never seen them sold that high. They are that high on the Pentel site, so that is the MSRP, but those of us who know where to shop know not to pay that price. Um, lastly is the Kuretake Zig Cartoonist Sumi Ink, and I have used... Um, I do use a lot of Kurataki products. I do use uh, Kurataki ink. We will get on to that in a few minutes. Um, I do not actually have any of this particular brand. I do have some of the green bodied, um, some of the Kurataki Sumi ink that comes in the green body. This is um, for manga drawing according to the bottle. So it is for comic work whereas the other Sumi ink I was using is not for comic work. This is not water safe at all. Go check out Parka Blogs. He did a wonderful review of this if you are interested. Um, and this was $8.50 on, oh no, I'm sorry, $6.25 on Paper and Ink Arts. And for those of you who are not familiar with Paper and Ink Arts, I highly recommend you check them out. They may give you some wonderful inspiration for your Inktober. They are primarily a calligraphy um, supplier, but hey, calligraphy and inking, very, very similar things. Many of the products that work very well for a calligrapher will work very well for an inker. Um, and that is paperinkarts.com. Uh, and a little disclaimer. Oh, wait, before I do the disclaimer, they want $8.50 for this retail, according to the Inktober thing. So, disclaimer time. I do not have any sponsors. This YouTube channel is sponsored by my patrons on Patreon. Um, so I do not have any specific loyalty to anyone or to any store. If I do recommend a store or a product that is because I have worked with them and I do enjoy their customer service or I enjoy their products, um, I am not loyal. I'm an artist. I got bills to pay and I got to go with the cheapest thing possible. So I paid $99 for this. And we are told that we get an exclusive offer, a How to Ink class with Jake Partner from the Society of Visual Storytelling, and they value this as $25. Um, and I'm not going to give you guys the code for that. Um, I have a formal comic art education, so um, while I might check out this class, and I'm sure I might learn a thing or two because we can always learn, I don't necessarily think... This is going to be much of a value for me. And they do also say that access to this class is for free. So they're not, it seems like they're not counting it towards the value of the box. So that is something we need to take into consideration because the MSRP, when you add up the price of all of these products, is $95.38. They are not paying MSRP. The lowest online price I could find online was $63.94. That is still not as cheap as wholesalers and retailers have access to. Um, I would have liked to have seen more things included in the box to fill out that $63.94 um, price. I mean, there's almost a, there is in fact over a $30 difference between what I paid for the box and what I received. So that is really upsetting for me. 
Um, especially as a reviewer, that is definitely a huge negative tick mark, especially for boxes like this, and especially from Art Snacks, who in general are very, very good at hitting the mark for, you know, right amount of supplies for what you pay every month. Um, I do feel like they did try to send a good gamut of inking supplies, and we will begin talking about them right now. So, um, first off, everything is packaged, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with this Pintel pocket brush, and these are really popular among comic artists. Comes with two refillable cartridges. Some paper that needs to be thrown away. It has a nylon bristle brush with individual little bristles to it. Cap is back posting and it has a clip. The way you refill this is pretty simple. You unscrew it. You go ahead and you pop the cartridge in, the divot side in. And you, I mean, you really pop it because you are piercing the plastic. Sometimes it helps to twist. And then I like to store them upside down so I can get the ink flowing as quick as possible. And if you want, you can refill these cartridges yourself with the ink of your choice so long, it is not, so long as it is not shellac based or acrylic because that's not going to come out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and store that in my little pink cup over here, kind of out of sight. And I'll go ahead and add that cartridge to my collection of cartridges. Next up, we have the Zig Cartoonist pin holder. And this is a wooden bodied pin holder with a rubbery grip. And we've got our three nibs. Now before we can use our nibs, we have to prepare them. There is an oily residue on them that helps pre prevent them from rusting. There are a couple of ways you can remove it. You can, one, burn it off using a lighter. And the way you do that is very simple. You hold your pin nib, then you light the lighter underneath and you just burn it off. Or you can use rubbing alcohol or an alcohol wipe. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my alcohol wipes just to wipe off that oil. The oil will repel your ink. That's why you want to wipe it off. And this is a spoon type nib. Now, the way you put this in your pin holder is very simple. You see this larger ring? You go ahead and you just insert it like that. The smaller ring is for crow quills. Alright, so for our Princeton Kalinske brush, it comes in this little bag. If you buy it in store, it will not come in this little bag. I totally thought this little bag was going to be easier to open. It is not. And it has a little plastic cap. I actually keep those for travel to protect my brush. Um, you don't have to. So we want to go ahead and clean it because this has a stiffening agent to help prevent protect the bristles, or rather the hairs inside. It is a double crimp metal ferrule with a wooden handle. You never want water to reach past where the crimping is because it will cause the wood to swell, the lacquer on the outside to crack, it'll ruin your brush. You never want to use hot water because it'll make the hairs fall out. So we're using some clean water here. And we're actually using some of the master's soap that was sent to me in my July art snacks. This cleans and conditions. Working it in. And you can also use this by allowing it to dry. You can um, use it to protect your brushes when they're not in use. 
So let's say you have seasons. Ugh, I have seasons. Like I can't really watercolor very well in the winter because in Nashville the weather makes watercoloring very difficult. So I need to protect my brushes. So you can reinsert it in very carefully. Ba ba. All right. Next we have the Copic Multi Liner. This thing is already ready to use. We have our Denik notebook. And lastly, we have our Kuratake Sumi Ink 60. I'm gonna go ahead and, if I have one, and I do, grab a knife to get this thing started. that did not do a good enough job and that was not a knife. A while back jet pens used to be the only place you could get nice Japanese inks for um, manga or comics or inking um, but Amazon carries a lot of them now if you know which brands to look for. All right there's our Sumi inks. So I promised you guys that I would show you guys some dupes because $99 for this box is pretty expensive and the materials inside are not necessarily almost all the way worth it. So let's talk. First of all, I actually have a lot of stuff so I'll just move the whole thing over. Some of the things included I can recommend. There's no need to buy duplicates for some of the things. And some of the things you can afford, you know, to go a little cheaper on or to shop around. So, first things first. I know many of you guys do use fine liners, so you're probably familiar with the Sakura of America Micron. If you don't have one already, if you don't have any fine liners already, um, and you're on a budget, it is a more affordable fine lining option. It is not refillable. Um, and it's also very commonly available. You will find Micron sold open stock at places like Michael's. You can find packs of them sold at Walmart. Um, it is Copic proof and waterproof once dry, same as the Copic multi liner. I do prefer the Copic multi liners, but I do also use the Microns. So, you know, that is a preference for you and it is much much cheaper than the multi liner. Let's do a quick Google search. And see. Um, let's see. Sorry. I know I should have had the numbers up ahead of up in front of me to begin with. I figured I'd be able to get those numbers really quickly and now I'm like nope apparently I cannot online it's mostly um, for sets so let's just go ahead and see a set of six on Amazon so for all six ranging from 005 208 you're paying nine dollars and eighty six eighty three cents um, for prime with free shipping so like just just one of these, one multi-liner, you can get all of the sizes of these for the same price. So that is a more affordable dupe. Next we're going to talk about Sable. And I have a couple of Creative Mark uh, uh, Rhapsody brushes here. These are what I prefer to use for inking. You get them through Jerry's Artorama. Now when I did look online I did find that the Princeton Sable was available for under $15 which is a phenomenal price for a size 4 round. Um, and Art Snacks is telling me they want 30 for this. So please guys you do not need to pay 30 you do not need to pay 30 for a good sable brush or a decent sable brush. You can get the Creative Mark Rhapsody in smaller sizes, to be fair, but I personally prefer smaller sizes. When I was at SCAD, he started us off on a 2, which uh, kind of confuses me that we're getting sent a 4. But alright, um, 
and I do work small. You guys have seen how small I work. So, you know, one and zero are good sizes for me. I also have here a Winsor Newton Series 7. Now, this is what people consider the Cadillac. And this is a large one. It's a size 5. And I got this on Overstock a while back. And you can see how much it gets used. I'm a little afraid to use it, but see much 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 bigger than the 4. In fact the Princeton 4 is kind of small for a 4. It's really more like a 2. Which may, may be why they opted to go with that. And we've got dinky dips and I'll talk to you guys about that in a minute. These are some of my other nibs and some of my croquills. And these are croquill holders. So croquill nibs are the teeny tiny nibs that are used to get the really fine lines. And we actually don't talk about nib inking too much. It is not really my favorite. So that mean that tells me I need to do some for you guys. If I hate it, I need to I need to do it. Um and this is my nib inking kit. It hasn't seen much use since I graduated from SCAD. This is my Tachikawa holder, and it's definitely seen some abuse. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger than the Kuratake one that I've been sent. And it has a, I think it's a G nib or a Maru nib in it right now. It looks like a G. Um, a spoon nib has a shape sort of like a spoon, and that's what's in my Kuratake. Um, ooh, there we go. Okay, good. I thought, I thought the nib had just like dried in there. And I have a Koenor, um cork holder as well, but I do prefer the, the G-nib. And I have lots of nibs in here. G-nibs and uh, spoon nibs and school nibs. And a brush nib, see how it's got it's like a little metal brush. Oh, you guys can't see because my camera doesn't want to. There we go. Anyway, lots, lots of nibs. Um, I think I got almost all of this from Jet Pins quite a few years ago. So if you're interested in nib inking, I highly recommend you either check them out, and I do say that with some, some reservations, or you check out Paper and Ink Arts. All right, so what do we have? What do we have? Okay, so the Pentel Pocket Brush. These are great. They are. Pretty much every comic artist has one of these, especially if they do traditional stuff. Great for sketching. Um, if you're looking for something a little higher end, there is the Akashia Bamboo Bodied Refillable Brush Pen. These went for about 30 a few years ago when I bought mine on Jet Pens. Um, but honestly, there's no need to go and get the expensive one. Go ahead and get the Pentel Pocket Brush. Um, let's see. There are some non-refillable ones. Like the Ria Fuda. This one here. Aha! And this is not... Um, I'm pretty sure three takes the A cartridge. No, three... Three takes the B cartridge. So this is the refill cartridge that you would get for your multiliner SP in three. This is a B. They come in A and B. A is for the teeny weeny ones, B is for the larger ones. show you guys my Strathmore Visual Art Journal last time in vellum. These are much cheaper. Let's see how much cheaper. Let's, let's use Amazon because I'm lazy. So you can get a 9 by 12 for $11.44. So much bigger than this. You can get a 5x5x8, five by five by which is what this is, um, for $6.99, and that's sent to you. And, oh, sorry, my cat really wants to sit on my lap right now. These um, have a much 
more rugged build quality. These are great for field work. They have, you know, very, very heavy chipboard front and back covers. The spirals are coated and they have that like double looping thing so they're less prone to catch on things. This in comparison feels, I mean it does have the double looping spirals but it does feel more flimsy. The paper in the visual art journal is also thicker and it can take some watercolor whereas I haven't tested this yet but this is cardstock weight it feels like. Not thick at all. This could be inking paper but it's not going to take washes very well. Lastly so I told you guys that um, I am familiar with Kuretake inks. This is their Sumi ink. This is the black cartoonist ink that I used for last year's Inktober. Um, this is waterproof, I want to say, but not Copic proof. This Kaime Soul K drawing ink is Copic proof, but not waterproof. So helps have too. And this is Windsor and Newton liquid um, Indian ink, not waterproof. So. When you're inking, it really helps to know what you plan on using your um, end ink piece for. Are you scanning it? Are you using ink wash? Are you going to color it? You know, it's a good idea to have an idea of where you're going with that. So, let's go ahead and do some demonstrating, demonstrating, demonstration. I'm just being dumb. And um, I did mention the dinky dips. I got these on paper and ink arts. What these are, are they are tiny little cups that you put your ink into. That way you're not working out of a big bottle like this. And these are just so much easier to work with. And if you guys check out my older Inktober videos over here on the channel, you will see me use them quite a bit. Try and clean up some space because it is time for demonstration. So I have cold pressed watercolor paper here and I have the Denix sketchbook here. And I know the inking class will probably cover some of these things, but hey, if you're watching this video, you probably didn't get the box. So um, hopefully I can help you guys out, help fill in some of those gaps, put my expensive overpriced SCAD education to your benefit. So, um, we've got our inking utensils, we've got our ink, we've got our dinky dips, we've got two types of paper. We're also going to need paper towels and water, so I'm going to grab those and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so this is my inking setup. I've got clean water, dinky dips, ink, paper towel. Ideally you want a piece of scrap paper, um, but since today we're mostly just doing demonstration, I'll just use the paper as I go. Um, and we're going to talk about the inking supplies we've got here. So I want to go ahead and fill my dinky dip with my Sumi ink. And Sumi ink is pigment based. I'm shaking it a little bit to sort of reactivate, re-suspend uh, those pigments. And now would be a great time for you to pull out a handy dandy pipette cheap little plastic pipettes because these do not have a dipper in them. I'm gonna go ahead and open my little dinky dip held tight by the wooden block. I'm gonna go ahead and fill my little dinky dip cup up. Clean out my pipette. and screw the top on my Sumi ink. That way we have less of a chance of spilling. We're working with two types of paper today because I want to demonstrate dry brush technique. So Pentel pocket brush. Let's zoom, -dee zoom in. Whoa, hasn't even reached the tip, awesome. All right, so you guys, See how dry and scratchy that is? Perfect for tall grass, maybe some foliage. That's called dry brush. Dry brush is when your pen sort of only hits the top parts of the paper, um, the highest peaks on a surface paper, like watercolor paper. If you move really quick with something like this, 
you're gonna get dry brush because it's not putting down enough ink to saturate. If you move a little slower, the ink has more time to go ahead and get into that paper. On a smooth surface paper, like this Denik paper here, it's a little harder to get dry brush. You're less likely to get it because the surface either has a coating on it to make it smooth or it's so uniformly milled, so tightly woven that it's not, there are no real hills and valleys for the ink to hit. Now with fine liners, on this channel, you guys have mostly seen me not use fine liners. Um, I mostly use little food aid pens like uh, the Sailor Mid Tool Ida. Fine liners are really good for sketching. They're really good for fine lines. They're really, really good for um, sort of man-made, hard, um, very controlled things like buildings and cars and things of that nature where you don't need an expressive line weight because you're not going to get one. Let's zoom real close because this is real tiny. As you can see, multi-liners only have one line weight and that is the line weight listed on the on the barrel. You can build up a line weight. Let's, let's make this a curve. And we want the weight to be on the bell of the curve. But you see that takes up time. You can also fake build up a line weight by going over the area a few times. You know what, let's do the really, let's do an, an eye, an anime eye, because that's kind of perfect for this. So if you want to have a very wispy, light inking style, you can use fine liners to sort of build up your blacks and your line weight without getting a solid line. But this looks very sketchy and it often looks very um, unprofessional and like you're just not sure of where you really wanted that line. And these are great for field sketching because they're portable, they're clean, they clean up very easily, they go with you. Um, these are waterproof, so they're great if you want to go out and watercolor in the field. They're great if you're drawing tiny things or you just want to do itty bitty details. But I really, really do recommend you guys try food aid pens. You know, I've been a big push for that. I have plenty of videos on introducing you to various ones on the channel, introducing you to different brands, showing you guys how to use them. So I think if you want to improve your inking as quickly as possible, you will move away from relying on fine liners and technical pins as soon as possible. They can be fun, but they shouldn't be the only thing in your arsenal. All right, next up, dip pin. This is something most people um, don't really use a whole lot, especially on this channel. Um, dip pin pins do have people who adore them. They think they're phenomenal, but they have a lot of people who do not like them at all. Um, I fell somewhere in the middle. So we've got our clean pin, rubbed, cleaned it off with alcohol. Dip it in our dinky dip. And we'll use this up here as our scratch paper. You can get very, very fine lines. Much larger lines. And what these do is you don't want, first of all, you don't want to press too hard. You don't want to cut the paper surface because that's going to cause feathering. And you want to pull with the curve of the pen. So you see how the dome part of my spoon pen is up? That's the way you want to pull. You do not want to pull this way. You do not want to push. You want to pull. And that's going to mean ro rotating or moving your illustration. We're just going to draw that same eye and you guys will see how it does take a bit longer. And if you go over an area that's wet, 
Um, you can wreck your paper surface. You can cut up your paper surface. So you want to be careful. And I'm going to, not right now, but I will prepare a little pencil drawing that we're going to ink. And you guys can check out my gum road. I will upload some blue lines. And see, we caught, you guys are going to have trouble saying this, we caught a teeny bit of the paper. So we need to remove that before we continue inking, which is another reason why it's great to have scrap paper. Man, those dinky dips work so well for dip pins too. I mean, that's what they're designed for, honestly. They are designed for calligraphers. And I use them for my brush inking because it's like just the right amount of ink. And you hear how scratchy that is? That's normal, that's dip pens. And these are what many mangaka use. Which, I mean, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, the thing about dip pens is they, because they're depositing like a line of ink, rather than like painting the ink on, they're leaving a thicker amount of ink on the paper. So it takes a lot longer for dip pens to dry. Brush pins, the ink soaks into the paper almost immediately, or brushes, the ink soaks into the paper almost immediately, but with dip pens, it takes a little bit of time. And that means if you go over an area you just inked, you can smear all over the place. So, um, that's definitely something that many artists do find takes getting used to, and that's why I express some, not surprise, but just in incredulousness, a little bitty bit that mangaka who work on such tight schedules will use dip pens over brushes because it's just like, gee whiz, I mean, I run my hands in it all the time and I'm not working with that kind of a deadline. All right, so we're gonna talk about brush inking. Now, if you guys are interested in brush inking, I have a tutorial, I have several tutorials on this channel where I demonstrate how to do it. I'll link those, but I do recommend you check them out. Um, this is just going to be a very brief tutorial. So we're dipping our brush in the water, removing the excess water by rolling the brush, which you guys can't see me do. Um, this is another time when it's good to have a scrap piece of paper and I'll pull all the way out so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I am not squeegeeing the excess ink out because you can wreck the belly of your brush that way and I'm rolling it on a piece of scrap and we're just gonna sketch you know another eye because we've already started with that and the brush as you guys can see puts down much thicker lines this is a size 4 brush so and you want to get the excess ink off of your brush before you start inking because you don't want it to just drip onto your paper are great for gestural sort of looser inks you can do very tight inks with them as well um, if you have a very light hand and this is why I, I use a small brush because I'm very heavy-handed um, you can pull very light delicate lines you can pull thicker expressive lines if you get all the ink out of your brush you can do dry brush effects although that can wreck your brush so I recommend you use a brush that's already old and kind of garbagey before you do dry brush effects And you just rinse your brush off in the water, you re-roll it, um, let me pull out, you re-roll it on your paper towel to get it back to its shape. When you're entirely done using your brush, you wash it out in the Brush Masters, um, Old Masters brush cleaner, or you can use a very mild unscented baby shampoo. And you can and should condition your brushes every now and then using, you guessed it, hair shampoo, cheap, unscented if you got it. And you want to let it dry out before you put it away. That way it's not going to get moldy. 
And you do want to take care because moths will eat natural um, hair brushes. They've ruined a bunch of my watercolor brushes. So that is something to be wary of. Um, so that was my overview and demonstration for the Art Snacks Inktober box. I hope you guys found it helpful. I hope you guys found it useful. I hope you guys found it informative. I know many of you were interested in the box, but expressed displeasure at how expensive the box was. I had forgotten that the box was $99. I thought I had misremembered the box as being $60. Um, $99 is a pretty hefty price to pay. And I do sincerely feel like if you guys are careful shoppers and don't mind assembling things a little bit at a time, you can put together an even better collection for less than that. I hope I was able to provide some insight and some explanation. If you guys have any questions or would like to see me further demonstrate something, please go ahead and leave a comment below. I will either respond with a follow-up video or I will respond directly, um, whichever is more useful. Um, if you enjoy this sort of content, please go ahead and check out um, the backlog of videos. There are a lot of inking videos on, on my channel. Um, and check out my blog, natasoup.blogspot.com because for many, many years, the materials that I reviewed were inking pens, technical pens, fine liners. Um, I wrote a lot about inking and brushwork and nibs back when I was taking advanced inking techniques at SCAD. So that information should all be up on the blog. Hopefully it's useful and inspiring to you. I'm working on, I'm putting my watercolor basics uh, series on a mini hiatus so I can do some Inktober specific stuff since so many people want to participate this year. I think that is phenomenal and I want to do what I can to help you guys get ready. So um, think of me as a resource and uh, use me for information and for help. I am here to help you guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, my fellow art nerds. It's always really good to see you guys. It's always really awesome to talk art supplies. They are my passion. And I do try to um, increase my knowledge and experience with them every single day because I, I love what good tools can do for somebody, the doors they can open, the inspiration they can provide. And I hope I can pass on a little bit of my love for art and drawing and comics and art supplies on to you guys. So uh, since we're nearing the end of our hanging out time, and I'm kind of waiting for paint to dry, and oh, bo -bo 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 -bo, you guys see it bled through. Let's zoom in. This isn't even ink wash. If it bleeds through when I'm just like squeegeeing the excess ink off, it's not going to take ink wash. Anyway. There are lots of ways you guys can show me a little bit of love. You guys can go ahead and hit like. That lets YouTube know that you enjoy my content and it makes me feel really warm and fuzzy inside. You can subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. I do these unboxing videos every month and I do lots of other awesome things as well. If you enjoy my reviews, I've got even more of them up here. So uh, why don't you uh, subscribe and get cozy, hang out with me for a little while. If you enjoy content like this and you know it's expensive to produce, and it is expensive to produce, 99 bucks for a box of inking supplies sight unseen, whew, but I do it out of love for y'all. Um, if you guys want to help fund future content like this, why don't you head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup for information on how to join the natosoup community. And if you've got some friends, family, other artists who you know would enjoy this video, please be a pal. Please do not keep it to yourself. Use the social sharing buttons below this video to send it to your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr. It would help me out a lot and it would mean the world to me because I'm trying to grow my audience and that is a great way to help me out. So um, I'm Becca Hilburn. It was super awesome hanging out with you guys. I can't wait to see you again. Hopefully it's really soon. Hopefully it's with some more inking tutorials, more inking help. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.